Greetings, brothers and sisters. Uh, my name is Brother John Hargrove, Service President, UNI ACL Division 421. Tonight is June 17th, 2024. Uh, this is, we are continuing our spirituality class, uh, spiritual discussion, and uh, as taught by the right excellent Marcus Messiah Garvey, uh, we should read a chapter of the Bible uh, every day. So um, I'll open up with a brief opening. One second. Brief prayer to open us up. Pause. Let's see, let's see. Prayer. Hmm. I may do it actually a little bit more of this one, actually. Brother Shaka does such a excellent job of presenting the our prayers. Okay, so. All right, uh, I'll just open up with prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. <laughs> Direct us, O Lord, in all our doings with thy most gracious favor and further us with thy continued help that in all our works begun, continued and ended in thee, we may glorify thy holy name and finally by thy mercy obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> o God, who has made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell upon the face of the earth and didst send thy blessed son to preach peace and goodwill to all mankind. Grant that men everywhere may seek after thee and find thee, bring all nations into one fold, and hasten the day of universal brotherhood through Jesus Christ our Lord. <clears throat> Amen. Um, I'll close with that. And I'll consider that our official opening. Um, so successfully, I'm going to need some help. Um, I didn't know if there was a particular verse or uh, verses that we wanted to look at today. Uh, what are your thoughts? Let me search real quick. Mm -hmm. Try to get some Old Testament if you can. Okay. Uh, One second, please. Excuse my sons. No problem. This is okay. I'm looking at Hebrews, Proverbs, same. What about some Psalms? Wait, is that Old Testament? Hold on. Let me do my research on mute. Hold on, guys. I'm pretty sure it is. Psalms of okay, Psalms are very powerful. Yeah. I use them a lot in healing work. So let me look there. We can go into Psalms. All right. I like Proverbs, Psalms. What was the other one that you said? And I said Hebrew also. Hebrews. I think Hebrews is New Testament. But... Oh. So, what about uh, Psalm 86 11? Stop. 86 11. Is that uh that's 86 is where they say you are gods, isn't it? I believe so. 11 specifically, teach me your way, O oh Lord. So yeah. Let's see here. Psalms. You said Psalm 86? Yes. Did I read it? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, uh, Psalm 86, 11. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. Uh, may I read the... Oh, this is not a, it's not a, it's only 17 verses. Yeah, <laughs> it's short. I'm sorry. I can look for another one though. No, no, let's, let's start here. Um, Which, where is the, uh, in, yeah, I the children of the most high. 82, Psalms 82, 6, I think. All right, but it don't matter. <laughs> Psalm 86, uh, King James Version. Bow down, uh, bow down thine ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Um, and for context, Psalms uh, were written by David. Is that correct? We know that. <laughs> All right. Um, we believe Psalms were written by David, King David. Uh, Psalm 86, bow down thine ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am holy. O thou, my God, save thy servant that trusteth, trusteth in thee. Be merciful unto me, O Lord. Uh, let me turn my camera on, sorry. <laughs> Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. Rejoice the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the day of my trouble, I will call in the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. Among the gods, there is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great and doest wondrous things, thou art God alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. No, okay, no problem, Dr. Sister, I mean, Sister Sisley. I will praise thee, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forevermore. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. O God, the proud are risen against me, and the assemblies of violent men have sought after my soul and have not set thee before them. But thou, O Lord, art God, uh, thou, O Lord, art God of compassion and gracious, long suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. O turn unto me and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant and save the son of thy handmaid, of thine handmaid. Shew me a token for good that they which hate me may see it and be ashamed because thou, Lord, hast hoped me and comforted me. Hmm. Maybe that's supposed to be help me. Hmm. Um, questions, comments? Anybody? Uh, Sister Cecily, you want to say anything? So I like these ads. I don't like this book actually. I don't like this site. This was a site I use for a moment, but anyone uh comment in what we just read? Okay, um, one second. I would like to say something. Go ahead, go ahead brother. <laughs> uh, it's a, uh, it sounds like to me a prayer of protection where this person is calling upon the creator to, uh, uh, in 
strengthen them and embold them and to um, protect them and watch over them while they are going through a, a trial or a tribulation. But the protection part is, I think, is the most important part. And I think it's a, it's a good prayer because uh, we need all that help and more. And it's, it's possible, too, when you reach to the right source. That's my take on it. Thank you, Brother Orman. Um, I definitely agree. Uh, anyone else want to say anything? Yeah, I think he's right on. Um, it uh, does give solace to uh, to protection. Reach first. I like to also add that number nine is also important. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name, which means that I think once we are lifted up as a people and return to ourselves, all this will be bestowed unto us, unto us uh, once we have made our transformation out of the uh, this world that we've been thrust into and um, and our blessings await us. Grace first. Grace first. Thank you, Brother Orman. Yeah, I think you said something uh, very critical when you talk about the source. Um, when we tap into the source, uh, magnify the source, uh, work with the source, um, and you know, to to glorify the source. Um, that's when I think we will make a lot of progress. Um, and but, if I might add, that the source is within us. Hmm. That's where the power and the knowledge of ourselves, which have been taken away from us, because once we know the truth about ourselves and empower ourselves and turn back to our creator uh, who lives within us, but we haven't yet heard him to the, or it or to the point whereby that we began to, like the uh, prodigal son, go back home and return to ourselves, then all powers would be given back to us. But right now we are. Uh, we don't have those powers now. We're trying to regain them with the knowledge of self, with truth and uh, knowledge and wisdom. And uh, because we've paid the dues hmm. and now it's time for us to uh, return home and to uh, the true and living God, which lives within us, um, not in the sky, but within our being. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, but yes, definitely a, a prayer of uh protection and mercy um and seems a prayer from king david uh to uh uh lord lord his god <clears throat> but thou O lord art god of compassion grace long suffering and to me have mercy upon me give thy strength unto thy servant and save the son of thine handmaid handmaid that's us hmm. Sister Cecily, you there? You still uh, can't come off mute. All right, she probably still can't come off mute. Um, greetings, Lady President. Uh, anything you want to say on this um, this chapter, Psalms chapter 86? Grace for his family. Um, Grace for his sister. Um, nothing to like they said to say about it, but um, as far as receiving the word and what the word is given, I think is um, is all, is all divine time. And of course, I'm giving thanks for this um, this spiritual session this evening, and um, I hope that uh, all of us receive. The message from you know the universal intelligence what he's telling us in, in these passages so um thank you all race first 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 thank you lady president um so, sister cecily may be tied up uh we do have you know we got a good 30 30 plus minutes uh for the sake of time i'm gonna read this one one more time for my own uh, personal edification if you would bear with me uh, hopefully uh, it's edif edifying for you as well. Um, Psalms 86, bow down thine ear. 
Bow down thine ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am holy. O thou, my God, save thy servant that trusteth in thee. <clears throat> uh, sounds like you're talking about itself. Uh, be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. Uh, rejoice the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous and plenteous in mercy unto all men that call upon thee. All them that call upon thee. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. Um, let me read that again. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy to unto all them that call upon thee. <clears throat> Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer and attend to my attend to the voice of my supplications. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. Um, among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. <clears throat> All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great and doest wondrous, wondrous things. Thou art God alone. Hmm. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. Uh, I will praise thee, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forevermore. For great is thy mercy toward me. Thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. O God, the proud are risen against me, and the assemblies of violent men have sought after my soul and have not set thee before them. But thou, O Lord, are a God of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. O oh, turn unto me and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servants and save the son of thine handmaid. Shew me a token for good that they which hate me may see it and be ashamed because thou, Lord, hast hoped me and comforted me. Um, one thing that caught my attention was, where was it at? Uh, fear thy, oh, that was what we had talked about in the beginning. Uh, teach me thy, Lord, Thy way. thy way, O Lord, I will walk in thy truth, unite my heart to fear thy name. <clears throat> um, and I know um, I used to, because we were just talking about what we were going to read, one of the options was Proverbs. And I know in Proverbs, it speaks on um, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Um, but <clears throat> I just saw that and it went back to uh, fearing uh, the creator. Questions, comments, uh, Sister Cecily, you still no can't speak. Uh, I may have to move. Let me get my, let me get a better book. Try to get a better book. Greetings. Uh, Lady President, Sister K. See, so well, you're looking if I might say something. Go ahead, Brother Orman. Uh, I take that as that is in reference to, I take everything that I read in scripture as in reference to us as the people, because we are the people of that last day, the only people who fit the description as the lost people or mm -hmm. the people who have been. Uh, away from the creator and uh, must return. And uh, we fit all the descriptions of those that has been lost, you know, that corner block that the builders have rejected. And mm -hmm. so I take it all personal as not for myself as well as our people, you know, the African people, because we're in the point of now regrouping and recovering and returning back home when we discover ourselves. The only people who have been in our condition uh, we're the only people who have been in this kind of lost condition in, uh, since time immemorial, where our minds have been taken out and we've been led so far astray. So I'm reading all this as a, on a personal thing, and I think you're talking to me and us personally, and so I, I take it all personal. And uh, <clears throat> and I like these uh, 
beseeching as we should be beseeching the creator for the knowledge, the wisdom and the understanding and the blessings that he's asking for to bring us out of this and uh, to restore us. And, um, and in the end, um, you know, after we've been re rejuvenated and returned, um, the whole world will come and uh, to and and bow to what the creator has done because he has truly transformed a people who was formerly dead into a very living and vital people who was the who are the foundation of the world. I, even though I ramble, but <laughs> race first. No, no, no. I understand. Um, we. Um, God's first chosen, I think, is a, is another way of saying it. The original man, as he, as Elijah Muhammad would say, the original people who created all people, who created everything, and that, and we even created the uh, nations. And they all came from us. We are the originator, but we've been put on the lowest rung. Even though we were formerly the original, we are now the lost found people. You know, here trying to find and reconnect with our gods. Because the only way we're going to get out of this mess is to uh, create, to reconnect with the divine, the divinity, which is within us and within the natural laws of the universe, because we're governed by the natural laws of the universe. And once we submit to the true and living God and take the imposter out of our minds and replace it with uh, the love for the creator, love of ourselves, love of community, the love that's been taken away from us, we will return to our greatness and all needs shall bend and every tongue shall confess, you know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's if it, if uh, that was a um, well, something that you said was implied in our spiritual session uh, as Garveyites and as a UNIA spiritual group. But um, we should definitely see our God, our Creator, uh, as as someone that looks like us. Um, but we should not have a anything that we worship uh, that is in the image of another race. Uh, so uh, I don't know if that was, you know, if it is a question out there, I want to make it clear. Um, the, the, the God that we imagine in our mind, the God that we picture, um, the, the creator um, that we picture in our minds is, is one that looks like us. Yes, yes, yes. That, that is very important because that's the only way you can truly tap into divinity. But mm -hmm. um God, as I see it, is a force and an energy and a frequency that vibrates throughout nature. And it's a matter of being in accord with that frequency and that vibration. It's not an individual, not a person or a personality, <laughs> but it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a, vibra a, a vibratory form that exists without the within the universe. The problem is we've been living amongst lawbreakers and people who have no respect for nature and the universe and we've picked up a lot of that's the problem with the world is they're away from the natural order the natural frequency the divine frequency which governs the universe and uh, and we have been a part of that also we've probably been even more worse in a worse condition because um we do it with divine energy because we have we've never lost the divinity within us but we now we use it, we use it in this world for different other factors that, sh that should be used for right. But when we use it for right, we will bring in a divine world. So we have to return to the natural flow of things, the divine flow of things. Uh, I, I take God out of a personality and out of a form of a man or a woman, but in the form of a, an energy force that it governs the whole universe. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and once you're in harmony with that, then you're in harmony with the divine will. And that divine will is not necessarily a personality or a man, but it is just living in harmony with with, with nature, and functioning in accordance with the, with the divine will is um, is the our the salvation is this being not going swimming upstream, but just flowing with the stream of nature. Right now, this the people who we've been living under have been. Uh, tearing nature apart, looking for God and giving it all kinds of names and things like that. And all they have to do is just practice those divine principles, love, charity, and all the different higher principles, which are not being practiced in this world. We have to bring those principles back into existence that all man can function without harming oneself or anybody else, but uh, living in harmony with the divine nature. It's kind of um, a high 
way of or a kind of a spaced out way of looking at things but it to me it, it just it, it explains a lot of different ways of dealing with it as opposed to dealing with a individual or um, he or or she or or a god personality you know because god is beyond the creator is beyond words and personalities and it's hard to put the creator of the universe because there are many universes thousands millions of universes the creator of all this cannot be put into a term it has to be understood on another level hmm. anyway race first yes sir um uh yes uh mr garvey agrees with your sentiment of intelligence uh universal intelligence yes um in the course of african philosophy so this is this is lesson two uh leadership he begins to speak on god and intelligence he says let the people know that God is not black, nor is he white, but God is a spirit and universal intelligence of which yes. everyone is a part. Uh, all of us are a part of that intelligence. Yes. Uh, and then I, I agree. Uh, lesson, yes. lesson five, he expounds on that idea. He says, there's a God and we believe in him. Uh, he is not a person or a physical being spirit universal intelligence uh, never deny that there's a god god being universal intelligence created the universe out of that intelligence but uh, yes he expounds on it in, in lesson five uh, anyone else uh, so far before we read uh chapter 82 it's another short eight verse chapter it's another short chapter it's only eight verses Race first, I just want to give a little um, inclusion on that. I would like to think, well, I was raised that God is in me. Mm, um, yes. So many different um, passages in the Bible where it tells you to um, go into your space or go into your closet or go, you know, go into this uh, a sacred place of your own where it's only you. It, uh, the Bible talks a lot about different passages where you have to seclude yourself and how Jesus himself, or, you know, I, I like the like said Jesus as a consciousness, the consciousness um, directed itself to its seclusion. So um, when you look into the mirror, when you look into you, you know, when you, even when you, if, you know, when in public speaking in college, they teach us, uh, you have to teach, you have to, you have to speak to a double audience. So even if, you know, this wasn't, of the topic of you know religion and spirituality, it just goes back to the science of um, seclusion and um, vibrations and mass and um, different parts of physics to where you can center yourself and and you know you can switch it back over to religion it, uh, with God and spirituality and Jesus and such. You um, find that within yourself because only once when you seclude yourself, you settle the vibrations around you, and now you're able to hear. You know, the spirit, you know, talking to you, or whatever. So I like to, um, I like to to think, to know, to feel, to understand that God is within me. And anytime I look in the mirror, you know, hence the onk and such, you know, we will get us all that. But you know, you, you it's, it's always there. God is within. So I just want to say that. Race first. Race first, thank you, President. Yeah, I agree one hundred percent, Sister Ra. And in silence, one of the things that we have should do too is find a place of peace and silence. So that we can hear the creator, because the creator literally can talk to you if you would allow enough of the insanity of this world to be quieted to a point whereby you can receive. And a point of uh, nature, when you go out in nature or working with the earth or um, just enjoying, just looking out into the sky in the evening or just looking at tree, the green, and, and understanding that we are all one. God is everything, all the time, everywhere. And so, and we're just one aspect of it. So, uh, and once we can allow ourselves to open up and to allow the creator to more space within our being, we will, <laughs> I know I go on and on, but we can, uh, we will get a much clearer understanding of this divine force that you, that, uh, um, that the brother Marcus was talking about. Divine intelligence, he called it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's really, you know, um, not to, I mean, we are Garveyites. We do follow Mr. Garvey. Um, but he does also say in his text, um, 
you know, if, if greater facts come along, we have the right to criticize, but that's not the point. The point is for us to be on the same page. Uh, and Mr. Garvey just happens to have given us a um, great example of success uh, that we can rally around. So even if there is a bit of disagreement here and there, uh, we can all agree that uh, Mr. Garvey um, had a had a good opinion uh, and a successful opinion of things, and we can lean on that. <clears throat> um, I, I would even go as far as to say he was connected to divine truth because what he what you read earlier was his realization of the divine truths that exist within nature, you know. And so what he was giving us was a very spiritual lesson there, oh, yeah. and uh, which must be listened to. Outside of, you know, it's the structure for the nation, but it's also a divine truth that, that we all have to come. Uh, just, as, just as saying, up you mighty race, you can accomplish what you will. It's so powerful yes. because uh, will is the key. And anything wow. that you can create in your mind. Mm -hmm. and, and see, your mind is really with the, the house that the creator can use, you, what you bring in your imagination. We have to imagine, not only hear the, his words, but imagine this nation, this new world that we're gonna have to bring in. If we can't imagine it, it's not gonna exist. Yes, so sir. everything we have in our life right now, we created and it came out of our minds. Yes, so sir. we're gonna have to put these words and his work in our minds so that we can create this world, or see the world that he saw. Because I believe he saw it through to completion, but we, he, a lifespan is only a certain period of time. So it takes yes, others to take that idea to, to bring it forth to fruition, you know? Yes, so we have work to do. Yes, sir. You 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 sound like you've uh, studied the course of African philosophy, um, based on what you just said. You touched on imagination, um, you know, um, several things. I can, oh, self self reliance. Uh, when you talked about yes. the world, um, Mr. Garvey talked about lesson one: the history and how we are confined to the 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 limits of our own mortality. Yes. And to uh, expand our knowledge, we have to rely upon those that came before us and, and you know, uh, read their messages and understand their perspective uh, of the world. Because we, you know, obviously we, we weren't there at that time. So um, you said a lot. <clears throat> said a lot, Brother Odom. And I agree with you. Thank you, Brother. Uh, 840, uh, we'll read uh, chapter 82, uh, have a brief discussion, uh, and then we'll prepare to close out for the evening. <clears throat> uh, Psalms chapter 82, uh, it's a great chapter, well, um, commonly quoted as well. It's 82 6 when we get to there, it's a very commonly quoted verse, and it is also in relation to what we've been discussing, um, the, the the God within ourselves uh, and, and being able to see that, see that potential within ourselves. Uh, 82 says, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. How long will he, will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Selah. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy, rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Uh, any questions, comments you want to say to that chapter? I have a question. Yes, sir. On paragraph two, it says, how long will ye judge unjustly? Uh, I don't quite understand that because I don't think it's unjustly because these are lessons I think we're learning the lessons from our afflictions and our needy and uh, and the and being in the hands of the wicked. These are lessons that we have yet to learn, and choices that we have to make. Um, and but we have the power because we come from we are children of the Most High, and but we have like the prodigal son, we've gone off and 
into another world and become very fond of that world. And uh, I think that we have to suffer these afflictions until we get to the point whereby we don't find this world so pleasing and so enjoyable. Yeah. And we decide to return back and you know, we learn, yearn for those, those, the peace, the love and the joy that we know it exists because we have come from that world. We are the people of the book, but we have gone astray, but um, um, we are in the return process. But I don't understand the, uh, was it unjustly? How long will ye judge unjustly? Is, uh, is that term to the creator or is who's that term to? Is it, can anybody answer that? <clears throat> and, accept, and, accept, and accept the persons of the wicked. My interpretation is that would be to us um, because the way it, the way it starts out. Is, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So okay. it says God stand in the congregation of the mighty uh -huh. God judges among the gods. So yeah. um, it's somewhat of a righteous counsel. <clears throat> um, and then it's speaking to us. How long will ye you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked. Yes, thank you. So thank when, you. when I when I see that, I think about what we consider our celebrities, our politicians. Yes, yes. Our quote unquote leaders. Uh, we know, you know, these individuals are, are unrighteous, but you know, um, I've even grown up, you know, in our election cycle, we say uh the lesser of two evils, you know. So we're automatically deferring to a wicked process. Uh, right. And and this is saying, you know, um, basically when will we wake up and, and wake up to our to our divinity? Um, yes, yes, thank you. Out. Yes, thank uh, you for that clarification. We, yeah, we should be defending the poor and the fatherless, uh, do mm -hmm. justice to afflict, to the afflicted and needy. We should be delivering the poor and needy, uh, rid them out of the hand of the wicked. But yeah, this is talking to us. Yes, what yes. We should be doing. Thank you. Yeah, I have said ye are gods and all yes. of you are children of the most high. So um, we shouldn't be doing, you know, uh, what <laughs> these carnal things, you know, we should be uh, in our spiritual divinity. Yes, yes, yes. We're lost in the, the you know, the, the carnal pleasures. <clears throat> uh, any other questions? Questions, comments on uh, chapter 82, Psalms. Judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Oh, God. And you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Yes. And that last paragraph, the last one, uh, for we thou shalt inherit all of the nations. Once we are arise as a people, and find our divinity, which is come, which is we're children of the Most High God. Uh, we will have to teach the whole world, take it back onto the right path, and um, and put it back in order that it's supposed to be in, so we can live in that period of love, peace, harmony, joy, and all those other good things that go along with following the divine path. Absolutely, and that's that's our job because. Uh, I don't know if we're the only ones that know it, but we're the only ones that are willing to carry it out, you know, to 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 live it and make it a reality. Well, the people in the church, they think that they are doing on the right path. I'm not criticizing or judging, but black people, or at least my you know my family, black people, you know, the uh, or African people uh, who accept the divinity. Uh, and put other people in front of themselves and put a false image of the creator in front of themselves, they think that they, these words mean a whole lot different things to them than it would mean to a person who have an Afro-centered point of view, seeing themselves as the, as the people of God. Because yeah. a lot of our people, uh, they see themselves as the people of God, but they have another divinity in front of them. And that's the divinity that they're connected with because the, the, the identification of the creator has been switched up uh, due to uh, image changes and uh, ignorance with the lack of understanding and knowledge of self. 
So right now, even though our people, a lot of our people think that they are worshiping the true and living God, but they know very, that's because they don't know themselves. Yet. We don't know ourselves yet. Let's put it that way, because I'm not talking like I know who the Lord is, but we don't know ourselves yet. And once we realize that, then we can truly put these words, like what you're doing now, is put these words in proper perspective so that we can utilize them to, as an uplifting. They take it as a left, uplifting concept when you hear it in church, because they most of them can quote the Bible, and but the meaning is different when you have a knowledge of self as opposed to having the slavery mentality or your worldview is a European worldview as mm -hmm. opposed to an African worldview. Yes, so right. once the view, worldview changes, then these words will take on more significance and uh, and become much more enlightening, you know, I think. Yes, sir. Yeah. I, in my experience, the the one of the biggest differences, as you alluded to, is the concept of um, what I would consider self-reliance. You know, um, we are going to be saved, quote unquote, uh, but a major part of that is what we will have to do for ourselves. You know, yes. it's, it's not about sitting back and waiting <laughs> right. for someone to do this for us. We are that we are the answer to our ancestors' prayers. You know, yes, we are here for a purpose. We are, you know, we have a job um, and we have to look within ourselves and that's kind of, that's what Garvey talks about as well is we have to you know find that divinity within ourselves but he says that um it's a um um what is it? what's the what's the term but um it's a disgrace to god for us to have any other per any other position uh, other than that which god prescribed for us so yes. be happy with second class third class citizens yeah. other than being the rulers of our own sovereign nation as god intended um that's a disgrace uh to we're, we're disrespecting our creator creator by doing that true and not only are are is god angry with us for doing that putting other gods before us but our ancestors are very angry also oh, and yeah. so the wisdom and the knowledge and the power and the strength that comes down the line from uh the that 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 we brought with us in our melanated bodies has been stopped and slowed down with this sojourn here in America and with our mind removed and our, our divinities removed and everything like that. So in returning uh, back to our natural selves, we will regain all that and, uh, and the ancestors will be happy and the creator will put us back in that position that we are supposed to be in where all nations shall bow and respect us as being the sons and daughters of the creator. Yes, sir. Yeah. We've been disconnected from the source and we yes. have, to, you know, we have to reconnect. Uh, to yes. Them. Yes. Uh, 850. Uh, anybody have anything? We, we can get ready to close out. We've been disconnected. <laughs> my father might be going back on again. We've been to that's we haven't really, the, the creator has never left us. He's always been within us, as Ra Ebony pointed out. Uh, we, the disconnect is a mental thing because Satan is a deceiver. We've been deceived mm -hmm. and we've been bam bamboozled, as they would say, and misguided and led astray and all them other things. And we've been pointing it, they've been pointing us up into the sky instead of pointing us to ourselves. Uh, they taught us to love an image uh, like them and to hate an image like ourselves when, when all creation came out of an image like ourselves. So uh, we're at war with ourselves and this war has to be won in order for us to come together as a people and rise successfully as a people. That unity is extreme. That love, unity will be turned to us when we uh, learn to love ourselves and to seek truth knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, then we will empower, once we empower ourselves, then we can bring harmony back to the, not only this planet, but to the whole universe, because right now the planet is out of order and, and there's a need, but the only thing that's holding it up is our resurrection. Yes, sir. And because once we resurrect ourselves, we can put the whole, put the universe back in the correct position again. So we got a big job. Yes, sir. Absolutely. I have nothing to add to that. You 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 said that perfectly. So
So uh, yeah, we we got to get to we got to get to work. Uh, we have to understand our responsibilities uh, in this work uh, that that needs to be done. So. Yeah, we have to be in manifest. We have to be in manifest because once you take on the power, wherever you go, you carry it with you. Yes. And uh, and and everyone knows it when you when they see it too. The European, the, the the Satan out there. When you go, when you walk in your power, nothing is in your way. So the object is get back into your power, and the whole world will open up for you. You will walk through this world completely different than the person who's walking through this world without power. Mm -hmm. As they describe it, it's like like oil on water. You'll be floating on the top. You don't have to deal with the chaos that's going down below. Yes, sir. Mr. Garvey said, uh, "Know yourself, know your God, and know the universe." Yes. Ashe. But uh once you really understand it, you'll you'll understand the connection uh between the three and, and see that they're all one and the same. We're all one. Everything is God. That tree out there, that rock out there, that's that cloud up in the sky, that leaf on that tree, everything, that metal post out there, everything is God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um Sister Cecily, are you there? Our problem is we separate the people, the mindset with the European and, and the Western world. Okay. Yes, sir, brother woman. <laughs> yes, sir. So, Cecily, will you be able to close us out? <laughs> no, 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 I won't go on any further. I'm going to give someone else. Yes. Well, we were getting ready to close. You oh, Mama Amina. Go ahead and take a few. You you got you can um get your closing comments, um, brother Ormy. It looked like Sister Cecily dropped off. Oh man, so I'm gonna have to close out. Um, hmm. Pardon? Can you hear me? I missed that. I said, you, you. Sister, Sister Cecily stepped away, so uh, I'm going to have to close us out looking for something um, in our um, prayer. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. <clears throat> I guess we can go with this one. All right. Um, thank you, brothers and sisters. Uh, we're prepared to close out. Uh, not by might nor by power, but my, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. God of the right, our battles fight. Be with us as of yore. Break down the barriers of might. We reverently implore. Stand with us in our struggles for the triumph of the right and spread confusion ever o'er the advocates of might. <clears throat> and let them know that righteousness is mightier than sin, that might is only selfishness, and cannot ought not win. End us, endow us, O Lord, with faith and grace, and courage to endure the wrongs we suffer here apace, and bless evermore. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, brothers and sisters. Um, and um, I'll stop the record, but that will complete our. Thank you, brother John. For this evening. Thank you, brother Orman. Thank you, everyone, uh, for attending. <laughs>